Hi, I'm Eric Engberg with Mindful Solutions, and I'm going to take you through a guided mindful meditation. So if you're ready, let's begin. More orthodox meditators will tell you that the body must be erect during meditation, with your back straight and your legs in a lotus position. While that guidance certainly aids in keeping us mentally aware during meditation, there's nothing wrong with being comfortable as long as it's not so comfortable that we might fall asleep. If you have difficulty sitting on the floor, or if you're in an office and can't meditate privately, by all means sit in a chair. The key is to stay aware, but there's no reason to be uncomfortable for a basic meditation such as the one that we're going to do. There's also no rule regarding whether or not to close your eyes as you meditate. If you're in a place where you won't be distracted by movements in the room, I recommend you fix your gaze to a spot on the floor within a foot or two of where you're sitting. If you prefer to close your eyes, that's fine too, as long as you don't feel as though you might fall asleep. I will talk you through this meditation a little bit at a time and pause for a minute or two as we need to in order to allow you to incorporate my direction into your meditation. So if you don't hear my voice, that's okay. It's just your opportunity to attempt some of the techniques that we've just reviewed. Just as importantly, don't lose your focus on your breathing while I guide you through this meditation. Otherwise, it can quickly become nothing more than a lecture. Okay, once you're ready, let's take a few moments to let your body settle into its position by taking some deep breaths and letting our whole self find its place in the space where we're sitting. With each in-breath, we allow ourselves to find the position where we can comfortably sit in the meditation without moving. Let's be aware of where our body is touching the floor or the chair and make sure we're satisfied with that posture before we begin. Now, let's keep paying attention to our breath by not forcing it into a particular pattern but rather by letting it settle into a rhythm that feels natural to us. Because an important component of mindfulness is simply paying attention, we're going to pay attention to how we breathe. Let's pay attention to how our chest and stomach move with each breath, if we feel pain as we breathe, we notice that. If we have respiration difficulties, we become aware of those too. Let's be gentle in how we notice these things because another aspect of mindful meditation is being non-judgmental. Sometimes in meditation, we can have a preconceived notion of how we should breathe, faster or slower or deeper, but we want to simply be aware of how it is for us right now in this moment. So right now, let's just pay attention to how we're breathing. Oftentimes, people find that a visualization helps us pay attention to our breathing. For example, 
The rhythm of the ocean's waves is a visualization that works well for me. And if that helps you, I encourage you to use it too. The goal is to synthesize our breathing with our body. So whatever imagery works for you is good. So let's try some of that visualization now. As we're able to focus in more closely on our breath, we notice another characteristic of mindful meditation, the impermanence of each breath. Each breath comes and then it is gone as quickly as it came. Like each drop of rain that makes up a rainstorm, our breath is only a brief moment in time linked to the next one. Although the differences may be slight, each breath is different. But no matter what the differences are, each breath is only present for a moment. We can pay attention to these differences with each breath. Perhaps some breaths are longer or shorter, raspier or clearer. Again, we don't want to try to make each breath the same, Rather, we want to work to really experience the differences. In fact, if we feel like we're judging ourselves, let's be aware of that judging sensation and how we're experiencing it, but then return to the breath. As we practice, we're bringing gentleness, compassion, and kindness to the experience of paying attention to our breath. In order to practice being non-judgmental, let's try counting our breath. Let's count the in-breath as one and the out-breath as two and continue until we get to ten. And then once we get to ten, we can reverse it back down to zero. So the in-breath will be one The out breath will be two. In breath will be three. And the out breath will be four. And so on to ten, and then back to nine, and eight, and so on back to zero. You might be surprised how easy it is to lose count when other thoughts enter our minds. But when that happens, and we get frustrated with ourselves, let's notice that frustration, let it pass, and just start counting again. So let's take a few minutes and try this together.
How was that? Was that hard? Or was it easier than you thought? That was less than two minutes, and so it's a wonderfully simple meditation to practice on its own for five or ten minutes or even longer as you start to get the hang of it. Regardless of what form our meditation takes, we must let go of judgments that pertain to how well we think we're doing. We must merely acknowledge them and go back to the breath. With this practice, this can translate into how we treat ourselves and others during the course of the day. Okay, so if we're experiencing any physical or emotional pain in our bodies and our minds, we must try not to make any movement that might ease that pain right now, but rather let's start to bring our attention to it. Often, we try to resist our pain and it only causes more pain, like pushing against a spring. The spring pushes back against us. As we feel the pain, we must try to let our breathing infuse the location of our pain. Visualize the breath working to surround and dull the sharp corners of the pain. We let our in-breath take healing right to the source of the pain and let the out-breath remove some of the pain's residue so that we're able to wear the pain away. It doesn't matter if our pain is physical or emotional. With each breath, we can start to notice how each moment of pain is impermanent and with each breath, the sensation surrounding our pain starts to change. Right now, let's try to bring attention to where our pain is and visualize the dulling of its sharp edges. Since we've moved from simply paying attention to our breathing to using it to work with our pain and discomfort, let's take our awareness somewhere more positive. It doesn't need to be a big deal like our favorite team winning the Super Bowl to experience pleasure. In fact, it can be something as simple as feeling a breeze on our skin if we're outside or having it come through an open window. Perhaps it's the sound of kids playing nearby or birds singing. Even if we're indoors, it can be the softness of our hair against our necks or even laughter coming from another room. No matter, let's take our minds on a trip of our current awareness right now and find those simple moments of pleasure and pay attention to how they come and go just like our breath.
Our lives have moments of both pleasure and pain, but they are only just that, moments. Now, let's take our consciousness out even further and broaden our mindfulness by looking at ourselves in more detail. Specifically, let's pay attention to our stress. How is our stress manifested? Is it physical? Do our muscles tighten when we feel stressed? Do our fists or our jaws clench? Or is it emotional? Do we get angry or sad? Perhaps it shows up in our behavior. Do we tend to yell when we're stressed? Or do we get quieter? What's that experience like for you? Perhaps it's a combination of several, depending on the situation. As we focus on how our stress is exhibited to others, we don't lose sight of our breathing. As we look at how we handle the pain of stress, our breath might become shorter. That's quite natural, and there's no need for us to try and change it. We just become aware of that tendency without beating ourselves up about it. Now we're able to be aware of our pain and our stress in the context of our breathing. Remember, this isn't about forcing change to our habits, but merely bringing each thought and each breath to the forefront of our minds and looking at them. So let's try that right now. Our experience in this meditation is a microcosm of the world, rich with moments of pain and pleasure for us and everyone else. It's no secret that we have negative reactions to pain and stress and positive ones to pleasure. As we bring our awareness to each of these moments, we see how we've become conditioned to these reactions throughout our lives. With practice, however, we can continue to learn that these moments, whether they're labeled as positive or negative, are just moments, and that there's another one right around the corner. As the moments come and go, we learn that we can more mindfully choose our response to those emotions, and we're not helpless reactors to pleasure and pain. So let's sit for a moment and pay attention to how each moment encapsulates similar and different sounds, emotions, and physical sensations.
Finally, let's take our newfound awareness to an even greater place, one that goes outside of ourselves and includes others with whom we interact every day. As we breathe, we're mindful that everyone experiences these same impermanent moments of pain and pleasure just like we do. Each person has a different background story, but we all go through varying positive and negative emotions throughout every day. As we become more aware that everyone shares a shuffled deck of pain and pleasure, we can begin to empathize with others no matter who they are. Whether it's a small shop owner in Israel or a musician in Vienna, a homeless man in East L.A., or a rancher in the Australian outback. We each live through our moments of pain and pleasure and have the ability within us to pay attention to how we manage those moments. We all experience tragedy and boundless joy, physical and emotional pain, and the happiness of watching others succeed. By becoming aware of our capacity for human empathy, our lives can become more in tune with the, reduce, with the reducing of suffering of others. So let's think about someone we know or perhaps someone we've never met and take a moment to reflect on how that person also has moments of suffering and joy just like we do, and how those moments might look the same or different from ours. Good. Now let's go back to where we started, paying attention to our breath. By now, we've brought immense awareness to how each breath incorporates impermanent moments of emotion. Now, however, instead of each of us being that ocean wave in our original visualization, we are each just a single drop of water in that wave moving toward the shore with countless others. As we breathe in, we bring everyone with us, and with our out-breath, we take them closer to the shore. If we try, we can almost feel the collective breath of everyone moving with one another like the wave moving toward the shore. One drop has a much better chance of making it to that shore if it works with all the others in a synchronous pattern, rising and falling like the waves and feeling connected to each other, moment by moment, breath by breath. As we start to end this mindful meditation, let's become aware again of the sensation of our body in our current space 
and the touch points to the chair or the floor where we're sitting. Let's bring our breath and our awareness back to this current moment and existence. And only when we're ready, let's open our eyes all the way and begin to reacclimate to our surroundings. I hope this has been helpful for you. Like playing the piano well or becoming a good soccer player, this takes practice. So please come back and repeat this meditation as often as you wish. Soon you will find that you take a new awareness to each of life's moments with a renewed energy and sense of greater purpose.